Are we all pressured by time? Is lack of time a general phenomenon? Is time pressure society's problem? The research looked at whether the, the pace of life, the speed at which we're living, was increasing around the world. So a few years ago, uh, another psychology professor, Robert uh, uh, Levine, went around the world looking at the, the pace of life, how quickly we were moving. And we repeated his study in 32 different countries around the world on the same day, at the same local time. And we looked to see how quickly 100 people moved across 60 feet of pavement. And from that data, by comparing it to the data that we had from 10 years ago, we could see if people's lives had speeded up. And they had, by around about 10%. So we're moving about 10% quicker now than we were a decade ago. There has to be a point at which we're going to stop increasing, because otherwise if we become faster and faster, it, it's just going to be crazy at, at some point. So we may have reached that point. It may be that we are now living as quickly as we can live. But have we reached our limit? Do we already walk as quickly as we can walk? It's not the opinion of a London association which is campaigning for the introduction of a pedestrian fast lane on Oxford Street, one of the busiest streets of Britain. Jetta Rail took part in the campaign. Off Street is one of the busiest streets in the world. We have over 200 million shoppers here every single year and 5 million shoppers a day. So we had an idea that we would create a fast lane and a slow lane. So on the fast lane you had to travel at a certain speed, you couldn't talk on your mobile, you couldn't listen to music, you had to know exactly where you were going and travel in that lane. And we would have officers that would patrol to make sure it was going that fast. And we'd also have cameras through the CCTV that could monitor the speed of the people and make sure they were adhering to those rules and potentially find people if they weren't going in the pace they should be. Obviously, if people are looking at doing other things like listening to music or playing with their phone or their blackberries, it's going to slow you down. So again, we don't want you in those lanes. To differentiate the slow and the fast lane, you'd need a marker system. So you'd look at perhaps a red pavement, which is obviously the fast lane to get you going faster than the normal pavement for the slow shopper. And I heard as well that you presented the project to uh, the Transport of London. Yeah. Yeah, so how was it received? They liked the idea, but the, the difficulty is actually administrating it and also the cost. There's a huge cost in monitoring it and, and putting in signage and reworking the actual street to accommodate that. So, I mean, they like the idea in principle, but as always it comes back to who's going to pay for it. So that uh, there's no cost problem. Yes, in terms of funding it, but they like the idea. But if the project has the favour of the authorities, are pedestrians ready to accept a fast lane on the pavement? I think that's good for the people that work in London because they obviously need to get from A to B a lot quicker. If the society wants you to walk faster, then you really should walk faster. So I'm not sure that slow walker could get fun because they're too slow. Well, I mean, if it's a medical issue, I, I understand that, but you know, maybe they'd need to walk faster. And it's better so healthy, it's healthier. So don't have a fine. Nobody's going to take any notice anyway. People will get used to it. We have certain fines that seems to work. In the end, we're all respectful of everyone being able to get there as fast as possible instead of just uh, taking their time because of themselves. The promoters of the fast lane are also planning to export their project to other cities of Britain and also to other foreign countries. Est-ce que vous seriez pour que ce soit mis en place à Paris Oh non Pourquoi 
Parce que j'aime pas les contraintes. Je veux pas qu'on me fasse trop ralentir, trop vite. Euh, hein, bon. J'aime pas qu'on m'oblige. Moi, je suis pour euh, qu'on aille plus vite, mais euh, de là à sanctionner, je sais pas si, euh, si on irait jusque là. Je pense que l'éducation pourrait peut-être nous permettre de, de faire passer l'idée sans forcément sanctionner. L'éducation, ça commence déjà par les plus jeunes. Donc euh, si on apprend effectivement aux gens à, à marcher rapidement d'un point A à un point B, peut-être que ça fluidifiera euh, le déplacement. Comment on apprendrait ça Il faut apprendre ça à l'école Il faudrait... Moi je verrais effectivement, oui, parce que je suis partisan d'apprendre à la source, donc pourquoi pas What was the real background uh, to come up with that idea We have in London one of the busiest high streets in the world, as I said, 200 million shoppers and people who are familiar with Oxford Street are becoming very frustrated of slow people and perhaps tourists and they would get rage and they would get very angry. You did a study where nine people out of ten experience pavement rage. Yes, right. It's very high in terms of the survey results and it is a big issue for us. Pavement rage. It's a phenomenon which can appear in places which are highly frequented by pedestrians, where the slowest people get annoyed by the fastest. If it stays level-headed in general, it can sometimes go further. A first victim has learned this at his cost, shot to death because he was too slow on the escalator. Psychologist Nicole Aubert has also noted an increase in time pressure in her research field. Dans les recherches précédentes que j'ai menées,